Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mina. I know it's been a while since I have filmed and uploaded and I do apologize. Just not been feeling 100% these past couple of weeks. So I know you guys understand. Um, usually when I take like a little break or hiatus from filming, it's mainly because I'm either busy, I'm not feeling good, or you know, I just have so many things going on. So. I do want to get some really great videos out for you guys this month now that it is October. So happy October to everybody. I have a bunch of like spooky video ideas that I would hopefully like to get through within the next couple of weeks. So we shall see how it goes. Can't promise anything, but today I am coming at you with a spooky recommendation video. Um, and I think next weekend I'm going to try my best to film the next part of my reading Halloween themed books series. So we'll see how that goes. But for today's video, I thought I would do kind of like a supernatural horror recommendations guide, if you will. I'm not like well versed or as well versed as some people are when it comes to horror and supernatural books. I've only read, you know, a certain amount, so I don't have everything on this list. But I did think of different like subcategories to the supernatural um, subgenre of horror, and I have a couple of recommendations for each of those subcategories that I think fit really well within the category. So that's what this video is going to be. If you're looking for something that is spooky, if you're looking for something that has some kind of supernatural or paranormal element to it, then definitely stick around for these recommendations and let's just go ahead and get started. So I do want to also disclaim that some of the books on my list here are not necessarily my all-time favorites. Some of them are books that I've rated kind of like average and they weren't like four or five star reads. However, I did put them on this list because I think that other people would enjoy them and I do think that they work really well and fit the categories that I came up with. I also tried to stay away from some of the more well-known titles like classics and Stephen King. There's like one Stephen King book on this list, but I was trying to choose books that I felt maybe not everybody has read or heard of. I know some of them on here might be familiar to you. I may have spoken about some of them before in the past, but this is just a list of books that I feel would work really well with the different categories that I created for like the supernatural subgenre. So, okay, <laughs> enough disclaiming. Let's just go ahead and begin. The first sub subgenre of supernatural that I wanted to recommend for you guys is just haunted places in general, right? And of course, this could fit for so many things. This could fit for like The Shining and all of those classic books, but again, trying to stay away from more well-known titles. So the two books that I have to recommend to you guys is first, Home Before Dark by Rayleigh Sager, and this book I think captures the spooky haunted house vibes so, so well. It's more of a thriller, but I feel like in terms of Riley Sager's writing, out of all of his books, this one definitely feels the most horror. There's definitely some creepy imagery in here that has stuck with me since I read this last year. And this book reminds me so, so much of The Haunting of Hill House. It takes place in two timelines. There is a um, haunted house book that's like featured within here. So you get chapters between um, like the actual events that occurred as well as as the events that took place in the Haunted House novel that's based on those events. So it does have a very similar premise to Haunting of Hill House and I think that if you love that show and you haven't checked this book out, I would highly recommend it. It's honestly one of my favorite Riley Sager books and I just think that reading it during Halloween would probably be the perfect time to get into this one. The other haunted place book that I chose um, was Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. And this one's interesting because it's a more modern take on haunted house stories. This is a story about workers in an Ikea-like furniture store, and they're kind of working during the night and like overnight shifts at this store and they start to realize that the place is possibly haunted and there are some haunted stories that are associated with this ikea um, and its past so it does have a very eerie creepy vibe but what i like about this book is that greedy hendrix does 
spooky as well as like social commentary so well and there's a lot of critique of like capitalism and materialism and it's just so good. I read this a long time ago, like years and years ago, um, but I do remember enjoying it and I actually had a couple of friends of mine on Bookstagram recently read it and they also enjoyed it. Um, so I definitely think that this would be a good book to pick up, especially if you're not totally into horror but you do want a little bit of creepy content. I think that this one is not overly scary but just has like a little bit of chills in it. Okay, so the next sub genre category that I came up with is gothic like ghost stories and I know that could kind of work with um, the haunted house trope as well but I wanted something that really gave off those like gothic horror vibes and for that the two books that I selected were number one The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. This is like a modern classic gothic horror story about a man who goes to this property um, after the family and the owners of the house have died and he's kind of like i think he's like inspecting the house or like making sure that everything is good when it comes to like the insurance policy and things like that it does take place in i want to say like the 1800s or maybe it's like early 1900s let me double check um, I don't know if I can actually find the year, but it is like during a gothic period of time. It's not like a modern set book. Um, and this one is so creepy. If you have seen the movie with Daniel Radcliffe, it's very similar to the film. So um, they both, you know, they're both good adaptations of the story. And I just really thought that this one is like the perfect epitome of like a gothic ghost story it has some very like spooky vibes a lot of really great atmosphere in here so if you're looking for something like that definitely would recommend the woman in black and the other book that i want to recommend for gothic type of horror is daughters of the lake by wendy webb which i did read this past summer and this one felt very gothic even though it is a modern story and it does take place um, during present day it does kind of flash back between what's happening now in the present and some stories from the past relating to this haunted inn um, and the people who lived in the inn back in again i want to say like 1800s or early 1900s can't quite remember but it definitely has those gothic vibes in here a lot of atmosphere this is more of like a cozy gothic horror but there are some spooky moments especially towards the end and i just really like the imagery in this book and it just felt so comforting to read you know when you're like watching or reading a horror and it's like cozy this definitely gives me those vibes like with a cup of tea or like just sitting in front of a fireplace. Those are the vibes that I felt while I was reading this book. So definitely recommend this one as well. Okay, so the next category that I have is supernatural books that feature a creature or some kind of unexplained being. So this is a pretty broad category. I do have four books to recommend to you guys. I'll try to go through them quickly. Of course, I'm going to recommend Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge, which you guys have heard me rave about multiple times on this channel and on Bookstagram. This is the perfect Halloween read. And if you're looking for something with a spooky creature, definitely has that in this book. There is this scarecrow like entity with a pumpkin head and every Halloween, um, the small town tries to kill this pumpkin head and it's just so good. It has such an interesting explanation for where this creature came from and it has all of the like violence, the slashery vibes, the supernatural vibes, the autumn atmosphere. So this one is excellent. <laughs> okay, the next creature unexplained being book that I have is The Return by Rachel Harrison. When I first read this book, I did not love it. However, I do appreciate its uniqueness and I definitely think that if you are looking for some kind of creature feature type of supernatural book, this is definitely one to check out. Um, it's a bit of a slow burn. It kind of takes a while for things to build up and you really don't get any explained um, answers until the very end. And even there, it leaves you kind of on a vague, ambiguous note. But like I said, I appreciate the uniqueness of this book and it definitely has a very creepy vibe and atmosphere and sense of dread throughout the book. This is about a group of women who are coming together, they're friends and they've been friends for years. So they're kind of like rekindling their friendship by going on a weekend getaway to this like remote but like quirky type of inn. 
Um, and as they're there, they start to realize that one of their friends, who is like the prettiest and the most popular, who always got the guys, she's starting to act a little bit strange. And she has this like insatiable appetite. She is just like not as put together as she was before. And they're starting to suspect that maybe something happened to her or there's something wrong with her. She's sick in some way. And it just gets crazy. There is like a very intense kind of like um, finale in this book that I definitely still remember to this day. And it's creepy. Like it reminds me a lot of like an old school spooky fairy tale vibe. So if you're looking for something like that, definitely recommend The Return. The next book that I have for this category is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I really wanted to enjoy this one more, but I think that I um struggled a little bit with the writing style but i do think that this book is perfect for this category and i think that there are so many people who would love this book um, and i do appreciate the culture in this book and i appreciate um, how again unique the story is in this book so this is very hard to explain without kind of spoiling anything but all i'm going to say is that there is a creepy elk like creature in this book and it was terrifying. And if you're looking for a terrifying animalistic type of creature horror, this one is definitely the one for you. Um, the language does get a little bit, I would say like poetic and kind of like artistic in the way that Stephen Graham Jones writes. So if you are looking for interesting writing styles, I would also check this one out as well. But there is also this sense of dread, creepy imagery, great atmosphere in this book. I think this would be a great creature feature type of story. Okay, and the last creature book that I have to recommend is Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. This is an older text. I think it was written in the 80s or the 90s. can't quite remember, but it does take place in the 1950s. And this is like, I don't want to say a ripoff of It, <laughs> but it basically is a very similar story to It about a group of boys hanging out in the summer and they start to suspect that something is wrong in their small town and that there's some evil force or entity at work trying to kidnap and kill some of the children in the town. And these boys take it upon themselves to investigate and kind of like understand the mystery behind this evil force in their town. It's so good. If you are looking for a book that is just like It and that's a lot shorter, like half the size of It, highly recommend this one. There is some really, really brutal, creepy, violent, gory moments in this book. So I think that anybody who appreciates like a gross and like intense action-y type of horror, you would enjoy this one. And I just really appreciated the 50s setting. I loved like the whole friendship, childhood in the summer type of tropes that were happening in this book. And it's just, it was just so good. Um, there were some trigger warnings that I mentioned on my bookstagram. So if you are interested in picking this up, please check out my post because I go into detail about things that kind of bothered me about the writing um, and some of the choices that the author made. So just know that going in. Okay, so the next category of supernatural horror that I have is psychological slash mind F books. <laughs> if you're looking for a book that definitely plays with your mind, that will confuse you, that will leave you kind of shocked and like, what the hell did I just read? I have two recommendations for you. The first one I've already talked about on this channel, and that is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. I have a whole video talking about the similarities and differences between the book as well as its TV show adaptation. I feel like most people have already seen the TV show, but honestly, I highly recommend picking up the book, even if you've already seen the show. There are some subtle differences, and I think it's still an enjoyable experience. Even though you kind of already know like the major plot points and like what's going on, I would probably still enjoy this after having seen the TV show. But basically, this is kind of like a domestic thriller, but there are supernatural elements to this book. And it is about this woman who gets involved with her boss and she unknowingly befriends his wife. And it turns out that the wife has a little bit of a sinister revenge type of intention in befriending this main character. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say in terms of the plot because I don't wanna spoil anything if you don't know what happens later on in this book, but it does take a very twisted and what the F turn towards the end. And 
I saw certain things coming, but other things I was just left like baffled. <laughs> like that's literally like the only word that I can think about. So if you're looking for a book that does that and that definitely plays with your mind, that definitely has some supernatural elements to it, but is still like mostly psychological and just like what the heck, totally recommend Behind Her Eyes. The other one that I have for this category is one that I recently read and reviewed, which is And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. And I did talk about this in a video a couple of weeks ago, like towards the end of the summer, recommending this as one of the more recent horrors that I've read. This is also a very fascinating read, very interesting writing style. And towards the end of this book, it definitely took a what the F type of turn but in the best way, like in a way that I actually totally appreciated and felt um, made sense to me. Um, but it does have a little bit of ambiguity to the story um, and it deals a lot with grief um, and just like childhood trauma, things like that. So know that going in. It is about a girl and her sister who escape their kind of like traumatic family life to go live with their aunt in this um, creepy almost like run down gothic home in the middle of the woods um, and they become trapped in the home and they can't escape because there is this force that is like kind of keeping them in there and I won't say more than that because I think you're just better off not knowing much about the story but once you get to the end I feel like there are people who either love the ending or hate the ending. I was one of the people who absolutely loved it and I thought that it kind of rounded everything out nicely. So I would definitely recommend this for a psychological mind F type of supernatural read. So the next two books that I have are under the supernatural subcategory of apocalyptic. There were so many books that I could go with this route, um, but the two that I decided were Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. I feel like most people have already read this book, but if you have not, this is the story of like the end of the world during this apocalyptic time where most people have already died because there is this evil force out in the world um, that basically kills you or makes you go crazy and kill yourself if you look at the force, the entity. I don't know. They don't really explain what it is. If it's a creature, if it's just like in the air, if it's like a disease, they don't really go into detail about what it is, at least in this first book. Um, this, that's the only one that I've read. I did not read the sequel to this, uh, but this is about a mother and her two children trying to survive and navigate during this apocalyptic situation and trying to find a place to live in safety. Um, I didn't care for this when I first read it, but I do think that if you are somebody who really likes apocalyptic stories, I'm really not one of those people, then you would definitely like this one. I do like the unexplained ambiguity of this book. I do think that there were some really intense moments in this book, particularly with a pregnancy scene that I was just like shook by. Um, and it definitely, um, is a quick and easy read, especially in terms of like language. Josh Mallerman doesn't kind of like overly describe things. He's kind of like cut and dry and to the point. So I do think that it's a quick, quick read. Um, and it's definitely unique. It's something that I uh, think a lot of people would enjoy if they like apocalyptic stories. The other apocalyptic horror novel that I have to recommend is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. If you've seen the Will Smith movie, you know what this is about. I actually read this for a zombie literature class. However, in the book, I feel like the creatures are described more as if they're like vampire type of zombies. I mean, there's a little bit of like, um, zombieism in here, but the way that they're described is more like our understanding of vampires. However, it's still an apocalyptic novel. It's about the end of the world. The zombie creatures kind of run rampant and take over the world. And there's just one guy left, or so we think, and he's kind of living out his days with his dog trying to survive against these zombie creatures. Um, he may or may not find someone throughout the storyline, but I will just leave it at that in terms of the plot. I do think that this is a really great read. It's also pretty short. I believe it's a novella. It's not even like a full text. Um, yeah, 
It's only like 160 pages. It's a very quick read and it's definitely a good option for like a more classic type of horror. Okay, and the last category that I have to recommend to you guys is the supernatural sci-fi type of category. So I have two books to show you. One of them is a Stephen King book and I think I did a reading vlog of finishing this book sometime last year and that is Under the Dome and this book... This book is a thickie, <laughs> so if you are planning on reading it during this Halloween season, you better get started because um, <laughs> it did take me quite some time. I actually like would start this book, read a chunk, put it down and not pick it up for months and then come back later until I finally did finish it. But I do think that this is probably one of my favorite Stephen King books, maybe in like my top 10. It's more of the supernatural side rather than horror, but I do think that there are horror elements to this book um, and it does take a supernatural type of turn towards the end. I won't explain anything but it is basically about this small town and one day this giant invisible dome descends on the town trapping all of the townspeople inside and trapping anybody from getting in. So they're basically like quarantined within their town. Um, and it kind of takes you through a bunch of the different perspectives of people in town and how they're dealing with this situation. Um, there's a lot of like power struggle and corruption with leaders in the government, um, which I always think is nice when I'm reading horror because to me, that stuff is sometimes more terrifying than actual like monsters and ghosts, just hearing about like the corruption of people in power. Um, and there's also a lot of like just crazy things going on looting, um, you know, people stealing, violence, just people acting crazy and like not having any repercussions for their crimes. Um, there is a rape scene in here that is pretty intense. So please know that going in. I just wanted to warn you guys because I didn't know that and I was definitely not expecting that. Um, and it gets referenced a couple of times throughout the book. So it's not just like a one scene and then it's done, it gets brought up later as well. Um, but I really do like how this book ended and I like the explanation, kind of explanation of where the dome came from, why it was there. Um, it was spooky. It was spooky in like a real world kind of way. And I think that if you are somebody interested in science fiction, you would probably enjoy this one. So it's got like a mix of horror and sci-fi elements to it. And then the last book I have to recommend to you guys is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. This is another book that, again, I enjoyed it and I appreciated its uniqueness. It's definitely not like one of my all-time favorites, but I do think that if you are somebody who likes sci-fi and horror and like a mix of those two things, this book is definitely for you. Also a very thick, long book, um, so just know that going in. This book is so hard to explain, but all I'm going to say is that it is about a family who moves into this new home and they start to experience some weird supernatural like visions as well as just like creepy things happening um, and along the way things start to get explained and some of the themes that are explored in this book are alternate realities um, and like alternate versions of yourself and like I don't want to say time travel but kind of like time travel. <laughs> I can't explain this book without giving things away so I'm just going to leave it there but if you are somebody who likes things like that um, for example if you really like the book Dark Matter by Blake Crouch which is one of my favorite books of all time this is like a horror spookier version of Dark Matter um, with a little bit less sci-fi but there is some sci-fi in there which is why I have it on um, this list in this category. So definitely recommend that for somebody who wants something different, somebody who wants some kind of like weird, obscure, surreal type of horror. I think you would really like The Book of Accidents and um, yeah, <laughs> that's it for this book. So recommend that for anybody who is interested in a good sci-fi horror read. So that is it for all my recommendations. I feel like I've been talking for an hour, but I know it's only been like 
20 minutes or so. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There are definitely some other books that I wanted to include on this list, and I think I'm going to be coming out with some other recommendation videos for other types of spooky reads for the rest of this month. I definitely want to film a uh, video where I talk about like my top five scariest books that I've read in my life so stay tuned for that. I have the Halloween themed reading vlog coming out um, and if you're looking for any other type of spooky recommendations before the month is out let me know down below in the comments so I can consider filming them. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned, which ones were your favorite, which ones would you add to my list in these categories and that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you all very soon in my next video. I hope that everybody has a wonderful day today. Bye guys.